different view on I think we should. <laughs> no, but like, grammar, and I hate to use the word, I'm talking about syntax. I'm not talking about all the other aspects, like conjugating verbs and long time. So I'm not, that's not, you know, enjoyable for me either, but what I'm talking about is sentence structure, and that is important to allow you to speak the language with confidence. And so a lot of students, if they don't learn about syntax, how it actually works, and, and they, they do translate word for word from a first language into the other language, and that's not how you speak another language. So yes, you need to accept the language for what it is, and I definitely tell people to do that, but I also show them how to think in the language, and that's important. How do you get to that point where you can use these tools and actually think and control the language? Because, I mean, there's a difference. A lot of people, they buy phrase books, and so they learn certain set phrases, but they can't use that phrase in other situations, and so they're not getting as much benefit out of those, that learning opportunity as they could if they understand how the structure works, and then how they could use it to their advantage in different ways. And so you can go about that in many different ways, and that's why I kind of lay them all out in the book. I'm pointing them out to you, but I'm also saying, here's other ways you can get out. You can use technology, as Steve's suggesting, but there are other ways to get about it. You can, you can use books to your advantage. You can use audio cassettes. And I put them all up there so you can pick and choose which way you want to, which way you want to go about it. But I also point out to you the very basic elements, and so you have those tools in order to move forward. Because it's what you don't know that holds you back. So as much as you can inform yourself, as much as you can become aware of before you enter the, the situation, or even while you're in it, that's going to help you out. So don't like confront those, you know, common challenges that people face and translate word for word, and you know, cause yourself endless amounts of labor that's that's unnecessary. But you know, use what's out there to your advantage. One of the things you mentioned in your intro was how to get people to slow down so you can catch up to what they're saying. Yeah. Can you explain that a little? <laughs> sure, yeah. exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I mean, that's one of the things is because people do speak very fast because they know the language very well. And you don't. It's like trying to, you know, hold on to a train that's moving at, at lightning speed. And one of the things that, you know, I should mention this is that adults suffer from something that linguists call the poverty of the stimulus. And basically what that means in layman's terms is that they're not getting enough repetition out of the situation. And so when you're listening to people and they're moving at a quick pace, one of the things you can do is, I mean, you can obviously stop them and say, oh, well, can you slow down a bit? You know, that's good. But there are other ways that you can do that and still participate in the conversation. And so one of them is that you can tailor the situation or the conversation back to something that you do know. So the words you're encountering that you don't know, so if bringing it back to set, like if you're, if you, uh, if I'm talking to you about something about cars, and you say, oh, that reminds me of a day that I went and did something that you really enjoy, you're bringing the conversation back to the vocabulary that you know, and then the person is going to be engaging in that conversation, but they're also they're going to be talking about something you know, so vocabulary that you already know, but some of the words and the structures that they're using are going to be different, so it's going to allow you to build your vocabulary at a nice, even pace, so you're not kind of overwhelmed by a whole bunch of, of words that you don't know. Another thing to do is if you're in a group situation, the people, the native speakers around you, they have the ears that you don't have. So you might hear someone say a really great word that you didn't understand, that you yourself would like to use. You can actually say to them, oh, what was that word? They heard it, they understood it because it's their, their first language, right? And you can use them to your advantage. You say, oh, what was that word? And they'll say it to you again. And so you can ask them later, oh, what was that word? I wanted to write it down or whatever. So you, and you're getting them to say it again, so it's more repetition for you. See how you're creating more repetition out of the situation? And so you're turning things to, mm -hmm. to tables to your advantage. Just, so little tricks like just that. If I could just comment a little bit on that. Um, one of the difficulties I have with getting back to the syntax thing is the explanation of the structure. Mm -hmm. Those explanations, there are so many of them, and there are so many exceptions, mm -hmm. that in the end you're faster off, you're better off, and faster to go straight to the language. And therefore by re repetitive mm -hmm. listening. And similarly, with have, it's, it's great to have these strategies for when you're talking to native speakers. Uh, how successful they'll be. The problem is that you're not able to control the situation when you're with the native speaker. It may not. It may, may be that you don't speak very well. The native speaker is simply not interested in talking to you. Period. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, uh, I, if I walk in Shanghai, somebody comes up and says, "Can I practice my English with you?" Well, no. <laughs> you know? uh, so it's not obvious that they're interested. And if you go out with people, uh, I've been in Japan, and for the longest time, I was a bump on a log because they're not going to slow down. They're having fun. They're beer, whatever. They're yucking up and, and they're not going to slow everything down. They're going to slow down for me once. And after a while, like I say, Steve, you know, you work it out. And so, have another beer. <laughs> have another beer. <laughs> so, so my point there is that in, in learning, and, and I'm not saying technology is the answer, but I'm saying <laughs> input. Okay? Build yourself up through input. Then you have an output opportunity. You do well or you don't do well. You pick up on some things that you were unable to express. Then you go back and try and learn those things through your input. 
because the input you can control. You can always have, I always have my little iPod shuffle with me. Mm -hmm. uh, you can always have it with you. You can read wherever you want. You can listen wherever you want. So you can do a lot of stuff on your own mm -hmm. under a situation that you control. Then you're thrown into a situation where you have mm -hmm. to use the language, which is out of your control. But I just, I just want to make the point that that repetitive listening and the things that you can control is where you can really constantly immerse yourself in the language as much as you want. Now, I, I just because we've had all the questions from